Now, nearly 2,000 lives have been claimed by COVID-19 here in Kenya. The pain of the loss of a loved one is being felt in households across the country. Now, as we grapple with a third wave, the reports of the passing away of a friend, a colleague or a relative are becoming more frequent. Well, the containment measures are making it difficult to share those last moments or even get the necessary closure from a befitting send-off. Tonight, we speak to Dominic Mwangi, a positive psychologist and speaker and a regular on the show, about how to navigate this tough season. Dominic, thank you so much for sparing time for us uh, tonight. Thank you for having me. Right. You know, we were talking about earlier when this started last year, when you see the numbers that were being reported by the Ministry of Health, you know, they seem just as numbers. Now, though, you know, those are now names and their faces and they're getting closer. You know, what's the impact of a sustained crisis that we're in right now on, on people's mental health when you actually can now say, I know someone who died of COVID-19? Yeah, correct. So thank you. Thank you for this. And uh, thank you for having me on the show. So as you are saying, when we when we had the first time that there are people who are suffering and we heard that this is in Wuhan, we, we felt like this is far away. It's not it's not something that is affecting us particularly until, as you are saying, we started, you know, ex ourselves experiencing the symptoms or knowing someone who has died. So so one of the impacts of sustained uh, crisis is increased stress, anxiety, depression, low morale, hopelessness, all this can happen. And people began, you know, one of the, one of the impacts of having stress for a long time is uh, you start, uh, you know, you start having less energy and you start being less creative and your capacity for making decisions reduces because you reduce a hormone called cortisol in your brain and this, you know, kind of stops you from thinking straight. As people say, mm -hmm. they're unable to, to think straight. Number two, substance abuse increases. And even for those who are married and uh, those who are in a, a sexually active relationship, there is a lowering of sexual drive because, because of the sustained crisis. And this can lead to you know, family problems, relationship problems itself. And, and one, another impact is uh, decreased uh, sleep. So people are not sleeping properly. And the lack of sleep itself has its own uh, impact, right? Now, number three is we are going to see an increase in psychosomatic illnesses. See, when you are increasingly, when you increasingly have uh, a psychological issues, mental health issues, what is going to happen is your immune system goes down and that makes you more susceptible, more open to different diseases. And so the more people experience mental illness, the more you'll hear people having the flu more and more, and even bigger, bigger diseases like diabetes, heart diseases, you're going to have cardiovascular disease increasing, people complaining about aches and pains on their body, headaches they cannot explain, stomach aches they cannot ex explain, diarrhea and all these psychosomatic illnesses that comes from these, you know, uh, continuous mental illnesses that they could be experiencing. Now, and the, uh, an, uh, another consequence that we might have, unfortunately, is an increased aggression. We have already seen this. Hmm. Now, this happens especially because men and women grieve differently or they experience mental illnesses differently. Men tend to be sometimes aggressive when they cannot deal with their mental illnesses. They can have withdrawal symptoms where they withdraw from their families, from their friends, from uh, people they care about more than women. And they can tend to use uh, substance abuse more than women. Okay, I'm saying more than women. I'm not saying only men. I'm not saying only women. I'm saying the differences are men tend to do this. And so what happens is you'll find an increased aggression within families. You'll find increased ag aggression and mainly in boys schools. Right. So this is what happens when we have sustained crisis and we have seen the burning of schools, a majority of which happens in boys' schools. Right. This is not just something that, that happens out of anywhere. Yeah. So yeah. these are some of the consequences. Correct. Yeah, let me ask, because now you're finding, because of the restrictions, grief, uh, for lack of a better term, is being disrupted or interrupted, right? So the closure you would get from maybe visiting a loved one who is close to, to the end in the hospital, you can't do that, especially if they have COVID-19. Uh, the burial times have been lessened. So if you're living outside of the country, the likelihood of you missing the burial, very, very high. So those things that would make the grief process maybe a bit easier can't happen during a pandemic so how do loved ones mourn in a time like this in a socially distanced world 
Right. Uh, first of all, it's, it is difficult. It's, we are living in difficult times and grieving is difficult. And one of the things that might, we might need to understand is grieving, uh, the grieving process differs from person to person. So we have what we call, we have different kinds of grievers, and, I, and I'll be explaining that in a bit. So the first thing that to understand is we are living in difficult times, and accepting that can already help you to start mourning in, even in a, in, in, a, in a more helpful manner. So first of all, it's a difficult time. Number two, accept that grief is painful, and it, it carries many other difficult emotions that you might experience and that it is okay to experience many of these at any time, right? So allow yourself to feel whatever that you might feel. Number three, develop your own rituals of how to mourn. So understand how you grieve and then try to develop rituals of how you mourn. So it could be, so, so some, some role plays could be very powerful and very helpful. So you might, uh, some people take a seat and they put it next to them and they imagine the person who left them sitting there and they have a conversation. And they tell them maybe uh, any anger they might have left. Why? Because it's okay and normal to feel angry for someone dying and leaving you alone. It's okay. It is very normal. And sometimes also sometimes you, have, you feel guilty that I should have loved this person more, that I should have been there for them more. So one of the things that you can do is to have like your own ritual. Like I was explaining, put a seat there. Imagine that person sitting there and tell them some of the things that you feel, some of the things that you remember doing with them or uh, ask them for forgiveness for maybe something that you did not do right, or thank them for something that they did right. So that could be that. You could do also that in the form of a letter, right? So you can write a letter to them, or keep a journal, or do some artwork, or do a poem, whatever works for you. You can also seek professional services. You could uh, seek a professional psychologist to help you walk through this grieving process. Another way that you could do that is, yes, use your religious faith or any other framework that helps you to understand the question of death and how someone dying means to you. So you might want to approach that properly and maybe speak to God about it. And it's okay. It's a good way to, to do that. Even in these times of socially distance, you can still speak to someone online. You can call someone online. So if you have a chance to speak to somebody online, Please do so, right? So, but allow yourself to go through the pain, to deal with the pain. Do not ignore it. Do not deny that it has happened. But allow yourself to go through the pain, and uh, it, you might, uh, as you go by hill over time. Okay, so give yourself also time to heal. Right, and you know, with that dilemma for the ones who are going through it uh, personally, are the ones who are watching, right? So these are close friends and family who want to offer support. And a friend of mine sent me a tweet by Catherine Kamau, or Kate Actress, as we know her. And she said, I just want to know how to be there for a loved one that is grieving. I really struggle with this. What do you say? Right. Yeah, it is, it is difficult to, it's something that many people struggle with. And it's because oftentimes that question is accompanied with what do I do or what do I say? But sometimes, and not even sometimes, most of the thing or most important thing that you can do is to listen to them without judgment. Listen to the person who is suffering without judgment. Right. Don't, don't say statements that might actually be unhelpful, like, everything happens for a reason. It's a very common statement. But when someone has just lost someone uh, that they loved, and then you tell them that everything happens for a reason, it might intensify the anger and hopelessness. So when you tell me that I lost somebody I loved and somebody who meant the world to me for a reason, what, what reason is that? Or you say statements like, uh, don't cry, you know, don't feel that way. So the most important thing is be there for them and listen to them without judgment. And that is okay. Don't wonder, okay, this person has told me this so much. What do I do? If you don't know what to say, tell them I don't know what to say, but I'm here for you. You can tell them that. I don't know what to tell you, but you can count on me to help you in the ways that I can. You can, you can give them a hug or any kind of touch that is uh, respectful and ethical and within the boundaries of the relationship that you have with that person, right? Mm. Then check on them, okay? Make sure that they are eating, that they are sleeping well, that they are going for a walk, you know, and continue checking on them without giving, without a timeline. Okay, you have been mourning for three months. You should be over it right now, okay? Don't, don't be impatient with the process. I think so this could be helpful. 
I was speaking to a close friend who said, you know, and this is the reality for many people, especially as we get reports of more and more people dying from COVID-19, the WhatsApp groups that are created uh, to offer support, raise funds for the families, you know, as they, as they bury their kin and their loved ones. And, you know, with the financial strain that comes with this process, they said, you know, it's emotionally and it's mentally draining because you literally are taking on the trauma that this, these families are, are going through. And, and they said right now they're in at least 10, most of which are of people who died from COVID-19. You know, how does someone deal with that pain, that mental trauma that is coming with this period and this time? Well, uh, again, I, w- I would go back to one of some of the issues that I've mentioned and to understand that pain that comes from some of these experiences is okay, right? So number one, understand that experiencing pain and experiencing negative emotions like grief, like confusion, like low energy, uh, like hopelessness, the anxiety, depression, all these are normal emotions and feelings to have when you are going through this experience, right? Okay. Number two, remind yourself of the energy and the power that lies within you to face suffering. So number one is to accept the suffering. Number two is to remind yourself that if you take it day by day, not envisioning so far forward, one of the things that I've been mentioning to many people is don't envision so far forward, especially when you are going through a very hard time. So where will I be in five years, 10 years time? Right now, focus on surviving the next one week, on the next one month. On the next two months, focus on that. So narrow down your timeline and try to chew what you can do at this point in time. Three, take care of yourself. You need your body. You need yourself to go through this pain and suffering. So if you're not, if you're missing your meals, if you're not going for a walk, if you're not exercising, if you're not speaking to somebody, then that is only going to weaken your body and reduce the energy you need to face that particular problem. So what you want to do is to take care of yourself to face the suffering properly. And I would say it's so important to speak to somebody. And to you who somebody comes to speak to, this is my advice. If someone comes to tell you about the pain they are going through, please just listen to them and don't try to tell them something worse that happened to you, right? Or uh, some someone you know who had something similar to what happened to them. I know somebody also who lost a friend, uh, I know some, I also lost a friend, or I experienced something difficult with my husband or wife. Just listen to them as they tell their story and validate whatever they're experiencing at that point in time and assure them of, them of, their, of your presence. That's what I would say tentatively for now. Victoria? Dominic, thank you so much for your time. As always, uh, insights very, very helpful to help us navigate and make sense of what's going on in this period and this time and also how we can be of support to those around us. Keep the conversation going on social media. The hashtag is Citizen Weekend.